All right, for this screencast, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some accelerometer data here. I have my circuit playground hooked up to the uh, to Mu here. Um, this code here is pretty simple. Um, this is on my microcontrollers.git on, on GitHub, sorry. And so I'm reading just, I'm reading all three accelerometer values, but I'm only printing Z and um, I'm doing a time.sleep of 0.1. So there's my, my data set there. If I leave it here on the desk and I wait for those transients to sort of level, level, level out, um, what I can do then is I can kind of like bang on the table a little bit like this to sort of uh, cr increase the noise of the uh, data. And then there's multiple ways to get this data, but I'm just gonna unplug it and copy and paste this. And so I'm gonna copy this and then I'm gonna throw it in a program called Sublime. And I'm gonna make an, a new file here. And then what I'm gonna do is do some control H's and I'm going to replace all of the commas with uh, nothing and then the left hand parentheses with nothing to just give me my data set. Now it turns out that I already did this before. And so if I open up um, the file um, here, accelerometer.txt, here's a bunch of data that I've already taken. And it's exactly the same as it was before. Um, the problem is, is that I also already wrote the code and so I'm just gonna step through this fairly quickly. So I import matplotlib, I import numpy, and remember the Python script is in the same, if you look, home Carlos desktop, it's in the same directory as the accelerometer data. Um, and then what I do is I grab time. Now time, what I do is I say, I know that my time.sleep was 0 0.1. So do take the length of the data times 0.1, that's the last time data point, and then take the number of data points is just the same length, that way they're the same. I'm gonna skip over this for a second. What I end up doing is I end up plotting the full data set and then um, putting a legend in a grid. Um, what I then do, if when I plot that, you'll see that I actually get, I get uh, this plot here. And so you can see in blue, it starts from zero to 65 seconds. This is the entire blue data set. So this is when the CPX was just sitting on my desk and I wasn't holding it up. And then here is when I was holding it up and wiggling it at the screen. And then I put it back down on my desk and then I started banging on the desk again, okay? Then what I do is I, I want to look at the average accelerometer data from this data set and this data set over here. So in order to do that, what you can do is you can say, give me all the data where time is less than 20 seconds. And you need to do this for the data set and the time set so that when you plot it, they are the same lengths. In order to get the uh, right hand data set, I need to do two calls. I first need to get all of the data that's greater than 52 seconds and then get the data from that that's less than 60, 63 seconds. And so I have to use these two lines of code here. There is a way to do this all in one line of code, but I didn't Google it and figure that out. Um, then what I do is I plot the individual data sets, um, the start and the finish. And then what I did is I made a new figure and I just plotted the two sets um, individually. And so um, basically, if you look at this data set here, I've got the uh, orange data set, which is less than 20, and I plotted it, and I couldn't figure out how to plot in orange, so I ended up just plotting in purple. And so I put that over here, so this is this data set from 0 to 20. And then I took this data set here in green, and what I did was, if you look at the code, is I actually shifted the time. So I did time n to minus time n 20 of 0. So I grabbed the first data point and shifted it over. And so at that point, you've got the two um, data sets that I'm interested in. I don't care about this data set because I was holding it up. I'm not actually measuring gravity. Once I did that, I was able to get the mean of the first uh, sex segment of data and the mean of the second segment of data and the standard deviation using the uh, standard deviation function and uh, here and here, and then I printed it. So if you look here, you can see that in the first data set, this orange data set, my mean was 9.5 and my standard deviation was 0.06. And that makes sense because there's not really much variation in the data. Now here, it seems like when I was banging it, it, was, it must have been bouncing at an at a, a interesting level because the average is actually 9.08. And then the standard deviation is much higher at 1.97 because, you know, again, the, uh, the data is, uh, is bouncing around. Now what's interesting, I didn't even think about this, but I'm pretty sure you can actually make a histogram um, so I'm gonna do figure, and then is it just plt.hist, and then data 20? Is that allowed? I really hope so. Sweet, so there is the first data set, and you can see there's the mean at 9.5, and the deviation is not that much. But then if I make another figure, plt.figure, plt.hist, um, data n2, 
we should probably see, I, 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 we might see normal. No, see, look at that. That's, this is a normal distribution, right? This is the CPX just sitting on the ground, not moving. And the noise is, is, is Gaussian. It's got a mean and a standard deviation. It's a little bit skewed, but for the most part, it's Gaussian. This looks like the bouncing, me bouncing, as much as I try to do a uniform uh, you know, roll on the table, it was not Gaussian at all. It shifted that data set way to the left and um, it, was not, it was not Gaussian anymore, which is kind of interesting. Um, so yeah, so there you go. So again, my code for mu, my circuit playground code is on my microcontrollers.git subreddit on GitHub. And then my code here for Tony will be on my python.git in a folder called instrumentation. And so I hope you enjoyed this lecture. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, happy coding.